Beeson is a place that shapes you, not just intellectually, but emotionally, spiritually. The faculty, the scholars, the, the intellectuals that are here at Beeson Divinity School, all of them are concerned about the church. There is an absolute need for leaders to be raised up who can contextualize the richness of our faith and convey it on a level where people can understand. The mission of Beeson Divinity School is to prepare God-called men and women for service in the Church of Jesus Christ. Beeson was born in the heart of Ralph Waldo Beeson. He was a wonderful, somewhat eccentric person who really loved the church, loved Jesus Christ, and said he thought there ought to be, here on the campus of Sanford University, an evangelical interdenominational theological school committed to the great historic faith of the Christian church and committed to sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with all the world. That was his original vision. We began in 1988 with 32 students who entered that first class, very small, very close-knit. We've now grown. We'll have 1,000, 1,000 Beeson graduates serving Christ on every continent on earth. But some of those things we emphasized at the very beginning, I still want us to keep and not ever lose. One is that we do theological education in a personal way, heart to heart, mind to mind, soul to soul. And so we emphasize that at Beeson and how we teach, how we develop our curriculum, how we live our life together. When I think about my Beeson experience, you know, the first thing I probably think about is just the professors here, the faculty here, and the relationships that I got to have with them. Even now that I'm in ministry, just as an alum, I'm able to still interact and, and get to continue my education in a sense and continue to meet with them and ask them questions. And, they're just more than open to that. Community is a huge part of um, who we are here. Everyone has different backgrounds and um, different life experiences. We take classes from professors of all different denominations, and being exposed to those different um, denominations promotes in us students a kind of um, ecumenical love that I think is going to be really important for the church. Um, in years to come. I love Beeson because the faculty was diverse. Um, you've got um, Hispanic influence, African American influence, denominationally very, very diverse, and that was huge for me. Um, the size of Beeson was also a huge draw. The classes are small, the interaction with your professors is, is great, and uh, I came on my visit to Beeson and the first class that I sat in on was Dr. Dorsett's evangelism class. And I walk in and he says, Whoa, he says, you play football? I was like, yes, sir, I do. And uh, he was like, what position? I was like, fullback. He was like, well, I'll be doggone. He was like, well, we need a fullback here at Beeson. Come here, son, and let me pray for you. And there in the middle of the class, he stopped class and he prayed for me. And in that moment, I was like, wow, this place is, this place is where I wanna be. If, if there is a slogan that said around Beeson Divinity School more often than any other, it's probably, Ralph Waldo Beeson's desire that we train students who can preach, pastors who can preach. And that is the goal of our curriculum here in every facet, for men and women to graduate, to go out into pulpits or to go out into le lecterns and to be able and responsible teachers and preachers of God's Word. I was actually pastoring before I came to Beeson, um, but one of the main reasons I came to Beeson is because of um, Beeson's commitment to the Word of God. I always knew the importance of training. Uh, my pastor was a trained pastor and I wanted to give God's people the best that I could possibly give God's people. And therefore I sought out the best divinity school that I thought that I could possibly attend. I've recommended you know, several students to come to Beeson or to at least look into attending Beeson. And there's a lot of reasons why. Um, at least one reason would be just the, the financial sort of help that's given to students, you know, it really does give you a whole lot of options. When you walk into ministry, you can kind of explore all kinds of different contexts, all kinds of different opportunities, and, and you're able to do that because of the financial pressure that's been alleviated through scholarships. We are still able to give every full-time student some scholarship assistance through the Beeson Endowment. These days, as you're trying to enter into particularly mission roles, debt is seen very negatively, uh, not just by the student, but by some of these mission organizations. Ministries the same way. So the more that we can keep our students from incurring a great amount of debt, 
particularly an amount that they just can't ever get themselves out of, the better. And we see that as crucial in, as part of our preparation for them. I would say too that it's crucial because it allows students to actually physically come to Beeson. Beeson still maintains that it's the best opportunity to come and learn face to face, to minister alongside people, to know their faculty. So we want to continue to do that. We're thankful that, that so many years later the endowment allows us to do that. But because the endowment is affected by the market, just like everything else, it becomes increasingly difficult to do that. Now, as never before, Beeson Divinity School needs friends who will contribute to the mission and the future of this school. To do that in all kinds of ways, by praying for us, by supporting us, by joining us in special services of worship and lectureships, but also by contributing funds for the future of the school. We are committed to preparing students for ministry. That's a very expensive operation. We put a lot into our students. We expect a lot out of our students. But we can't do that alone. We need the help of our friends who will stand with us in reaching out to the next generation. And when you make a gift to Beeson Divinity School, uh, you're investing in the future of the kingdom of God. That's a wonderful kind of stewardship. The world today, as never before, needs ministers of the gospel who are sold out to Jesus Christ and well prepared to carry the message of grace and forgiveness into all the world everywhere.